It's recording. Howdy, and welcome to the Whiskey Butler. I, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. We got, can you start us off? Thanks, buddy. You, you, okay. All right. <laughs> Howdy. Welcome to the Whiskey Butler again. I am your host, Wesley Butler, here to serve you a little whiskey wisdom. Today, we're going to talk about whiskey, but what makes today's episode so special is that we're going to celebrate the return of baseball. And I know they played baseball last year, but really it's the return of fans to baseball games. And so today, we're not only going to talk about whiskey, but we're going to talk about baseball. And I thought, who better to have in this, in this whiskey and baseball episode with me, other than my good friend, Amy. Come on in here, Amy. Oh, yes, Amy. We, did, do I need to lower the camera so oh, they can see you? Stop. Oh, okay, I think okay. they can see me. Oh, they can and see And my me. awesome Mets and Daryl's Strawberry. Uh, so if you don't know who Amy's favorite team is, you might be blind. But yes, Amy is a Mets fan, hence the nice Mets jersey I have hanging behind her. Uh, Amy and I have been to several games across the country together. Um, so we talk baseball all the time. We talk a lot of other things all the time, too. But today we're going to talk about baseball. So, all right. Uh, anything you'd like to say before we get started? Go Mets. Actually, LFGM. Let's effing go Mets. <laughs> okay, all right. That's what we're going to say before we get started. So, since we're talking about baseball, I thought today's episode we would we would go over a couple of whiskeys from the Cooperstown Distillery. Now, for those of you who are baseball fans, you know that Cooperstown is the home of the Hall of Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, which, by the way, all the opinions expressed in today's episode are those of Amy and myself alone and not any of any of the team's or Major League Baseball that we might discuss here today. So, just thought I'd throw that out there. But anyway, we're going to talk about Cooperstown Distillery, home of the Hall of Fame. They have a distillery there that makes some whiskeys. So, I, I found some, and I, I thought we would talk about them today. So, uh, but before we get started, I have actually never been to Cooperstown, New York, nor the Hall of Fame. Have you ever been to the Hall of Fame? I have. My brother actually works in Cooperstown, so I've been up there multiple times. I went as a kid, and I don't remember much about it, but I've gone <laughs> as an adult. And I've gone to the, of course, I've gone to Mike Piazza's induction ceremony a few years ago. Really? So, yes. How was that? Well, it was him and Ken Griffey Jr., so it was pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, it was 50-50, a lot of Mariners fans and a lot of Mets fans, but uh, seeing that induction was pretty cool. But going to Cooperstown and seeing all the plaques is pretty awesome. So. Okay, okay, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, we will get to Hall of Fame numbers later on when, okay. we, when we start when I start quizzing you to see about your baseball knowledge. But first thing we're gonna start off is this Abner Double Day whiskey here from the Cooperstown Distillery. It is a young whiskey, it's not a bourbon, it's a whiskey. Uh, it's aged 10 months in used uh, bourbon barrels. It's got a traditional, I'll call it a traditional uh, bourbon mash bill recipe. It's corn, it's a lot of corn, some malted barley and some rye. Um, so we're just going to try this. We're gonna, there's, there's really not much else to say about it, right? We're going to try this. This is my virgin tasting. A lot of the times, you know, I like to do virgin tastings on video so you get my, you get my true, uh, true opinion of this. Oh, nice. In my, addition, my virgin tasting too. Yes, Amy's virgin tasting too. In addition to going to lots of baseball Thank games you. together, Amy and I also went on uh, a friend's 40th birthday trip to... Louisville, Kentucky together. So we've watched baseball together. We've drank bourbon together. It's been a, uh, it's been enjoyable. So cheers, cheers, cheers. Nose isn't overly strong. Isn't overly strong. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of smooth. You feel like it's kind of smooth mm -hmm. for ten months. Yeah, I like it. Okay. But I'm not a connoisseur like you are. Wes, so I would not, not trust me, my opinion. You're not okay? going to tell me about the chocolate and no, the toffee notes. I'm just going to say it's good. <laughs> Honest opinion, that's what I like. Okay, you're actually you're actually right. It does it, it does go down does go down very smooth. I like it. Very smooth for a young whiskey. Very smooth for a young whiskey. That's interesting. I'm not a big whiskey drinker and I actually quite enjoy it. <laughs> you know, I've tasted some whiskeys that have gone in used bourbon barrels before. That have been absolutely awful. This is certainly not. This is this is definitely drinkable. Um, okay, so let's get into a little baseball around this whiskey. So 
This is a young whiskey because um, it's only matured 10 months. So when we're thinking about baseball and we're thinking about young, think about all those young rookie hot shots, or maybe they're not rookies anymore. They've been, they haven't been in the majors in a long time. So, so Amy, I'm going to ask you. Okay. Who is your favorite young Major League Baseball player? And I'm going to define young as under the age of 23. All right, so obviously everyone wants to say Juan Soto. Ooh, you say everyone, just because I'm wearing a but Nationals jersey. I personally really like Ronald Acuna of the um, Atlanta Braves. Who I'm barely sure. fits our term he because he, he's 23 fits. this season. He yes. barely fits, but he is fun to watch. He's enthusiastic. He is a great player. And did he beat out Juan Soto for Rookie of the Year? He, I think he did. Uh, no. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I think he did. Yes, I think he did. I think he did. I, he, he would be my, my someone I, if I had to pick to watch at the young age. What so, about you? I'm very surprised you didn't say Andres Jimenez for the Mets. Oh, right? but he's, he's now in Cleveland. Oh, well, okay. We he's traded him in Cleveland in order to get Francisco. To get, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, uh, you know, there's a lots of different ways I thought I could go with this. There's the, uh, the Major League Baseball progeny route, Bo Bichette and... Oh. Vlad Jr. and Fernando, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I could go the progeny route. All of those are really good. But I'm going to go with a tie for players under 23 with World Series experience. So I'm going to go with Juan Soto because okay. he's been in the World Series. I'm also going to go with Dustin May okay. of the Dodgers, right? I mean, this guy this guy can really pitch. I mean, I mean, he's got a mop on his head, right? You know, but uh, but doesn't he can, matter. But doesn't matter. Doesn't, carry you doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He can he can he can throw a fastball. So those are my two. So on the flip side, what are your players? What are your favorite players over the age of thirty-two? So we, we went with the young players. Now we're going to go with the older players. I personally know I'm um, not Ryan Zimmerman. Um, <laughs> Why you gotta call out all my national My here? my favorites are I love. There's two that really stand out. I mean Albert Pujols is um, he's just awesome. Not to even watch. in his 30s anymore. Right, but I remember <laughs> seeing him as a Cardinal uh, play against the Mets once, and he just came up and smashed a ball out of the stadium and. I mean, that was when he was earlier in his career, and it was just incredible to watch. And um, I also like who you don't see much on the East Coast uh, because he was with Arizona for a while, and now he's with, with St. Louis. I like Paul Goldschmidt a lot. Yes, he's Paul Goldschmidt can hitter. rock a ball he's out of the ballpark. Hitter. He's first base now, right? Great first baseman. Yeah. I like, those are my two guys that I, I like watching in the oh. older crowd. Okay, okay. Those are, that's, two, that's two good ones. So I'm going to go with... I'm not going to be a homer and go with a bunch of Nationals players. I mean, I am going to mention a couple of Nationals players. But uh, being a pitcher when I was younger and I was playing baseball, like, I'm going to go with a bunch of pitchers here. Okay. So I'm going to go with Justin Verlander, and I'm going to go with Zach Greinke, two guys that almost beat us out for the World Series a couple of years ago. But then I'm also going to go with Max Scherzer and... Um, Max Scherzer is a gamer. Max Scherzer. I mean, he breaks his nose and still pitches. So I, I mean... Can't, gotta respect that. Look, we're, we're going to talk about 10-year plus contracts later. And I know Max didn't get a 10-year contract, but he signed a 7-year contract. When he first signed his 7-year contract with the Nationals, I was beside myself. I was like, why are we giving somebody a 7-year contract for so much money? Like... Who's gonna Who's gonna make? How are we gonna get our return on investment? Okay, a couple of Cy Youngs yeah. later, and a World Series, and a couple of no hitters. I it's think been I, worth every and time. Max has been worth every single penny. So Max Scherzer, if you ever watch this video, I apologize for doubting you when you signed with the Nationals, but you are the man. You are the man. So okay. Um. <laughs> okay. So. We're talking about baseball again, and we're talking about this whiskey. It's aged uh, 10 months in used barrels. So, I mentioned it earlier. We're going to get to this thing of 10-plus year contracts in Major League Baseball. I mean, a decade is a really long time. What were you doing a decade ago? Uh, teaching still. Um, <laughs> I was a little faster in my youth. Um, but, yeah. But a lot happens in a, a decade, lot right? A lot decade. happens in yes. a decade. Yes. And so... I just, uh, you know, most Major League Baseball players don't even play 10 years, um, and, and these days it's easy to go from MVP candidate to utility player in a matter of two years, so I don't know, it's just, 
this idea, of, and these are guaranteed contracts as soon as they ink them, right? Money. There's a yeah. lot. It's not like the NBA or the NFL where you see these contracts and then, you know, a guy gets cut and they don't end up paying him that money later on. Um, okay, so my quiz questions for you. I told you we were going to talk about this today, okay. but I didn't tell you what. How many 10 plus 10 and longer year contracts have been signed in MLB history? Oh. Well, there's been a well a lot recently because we have had Manny Machado, yeah, and Fernando Tatis and Bryce Harper, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, By the way, if you're watching out there in internet land, please feel free to make comments in the live chat if you're watching it on the premiere. Comments if you're not. If you know the answers, just go ahead and yell them out because I have a feeling she's gonna get it wrong. I honestly don't know, like. 15? Oh my gosh, you got it right! It is 15! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> yes, yes. 15, 15 10 plus year contracts in Major League Baseball. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. Do you know who signed the first one ever? No clue about that. No clue about that one? Okay. First one ever was by a pitcher by the name of Wayne Garland. 1977 to 1986 with the Indians. Okay. 10 years. Okay, 10 years, $2.3 million. For the entire contract. For the entire contract. He got for the hooked. entire contract. He got, he got Oh my God, can you believe that? I mean, that's that's ridiculous. But right. he's actually the only pitcher who's gotten a 10 year contract because this guy tore his, uh, unfortunately, he tore his rotator cuff. He didn't even end up playing out the tenure of his 10 year contract. So, um, do you know who has signed more than one? Al, Alex Rodriguez? Yes, yes. Yes, A-Rod, the only player to sign multiple 10-plus year contracts. Texas and New York. He actually didn't play out the entirety of his first 10-year contract that he signed with the Rangers because they, they shipped him off to New York. He ended up opting out after seven or eight years. Quarter of a mil billion dollars. <laughs> ridiculous contract. Ever. I remember when he signed that. I tell you what, though. But, I mean, A-Rod's one of those where, I mean, you know, can you ever live up to a 10-year contract? He won a couple of MVPs. They won a couple of World Series. Now, would they have won it if he hadn't been there or if he hadn't been on a 10-year contract? Who knows? But, unfortunately, he didn't bring any of that stuff to the Rangers. Took it all to New York. But I'm from Texas, so it makes me feel a little bad. Um, but okay, so we'll get to all the players that have signed it, but of all the current players that are on 10 year contracts, mm -hmm. okay, who, who has the best chance 10 year contracts that are still active, right? So mm -hmm. Albert Pujols signed a 10 year contract with the angels, but his ends this year, right? Okay. So we're not going to count him. So of all the players that uh, are on 10 year contracts, who has the best chance of finishing the contract with the team they signed it with. I'm actually going to drink a little bit more of this whiskey while she thinks about this. Um, so that's purely that, an opinion question. It's certainly an opinion question. It also um, requires you to know who all is who Well, all I don't know too many on. except for the for Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, and Fernando Tatis okay. Jr. Um, I would give... You want me to tell you who the rest of them yeah, are? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So you got Tatis Jr., Padres... Mookie Betts with the Dodgers. Okay. We got Bryce Harper with the Phillies. Yeah. Mike Trout with the Angels yeah. has a 10-year contract. Uh, Manny Machado. Well, Giancarlo Stanton has an active 10-year contract, but he's already not with the team that he signed it with. Okay. And uh, Robinson Cano is no longer with the team that he signed it. Please, please, please. He just needs to stop taking drugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joey Votto signed his with the Reds, but he's no longer with the Reds either. So. He's not Are you sure? I'm pretty sure he's still a red. Okay, he's still a red. We'll go with he's still a red right now. We'll, somebody out there comment and let us know if he's still a red. But pretty anyway, nice. those are your active 10-year contracts. So I'm going to go with, with their... Mike, Mike Trout. I think he's going to be an angel for life. Uh, 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 I would be... I'd be willing to I wish they were for better for him, and I wish they would put more money so he could... I mean, they took one of my nationals. They took... Uh, uh, they Anthony took Rendon. Anthony Rendon. Yeah. I like, I really like, I was not upset with that at all. I was like, peace out, Rendon, <laughs> head out to the west. Um, but I really like Mike Trout, and I root for him all the time. Because he's a good guy. He's from Jersey. Go Jersey. Um, and uh, he's just a great player and a great, he's great for the sport. 
you know, it's a great face for the sport. You know, I think, uh, you know, Mike Trout's going to end up being one of those. People always say, oh, I got to see Ted Williams in his prime mm -hmm. or Hank Aaron in his prime. I think Mike Trout's going to be one of those players that we look back on one day. Mm -hmm. And... And we've only you know, seen him, I've only seen him in the All-Star game a couple years ago. Right, right. Well, I haven't seen him play in a regular season game. You know, I mean, I, I just, I just recently, well, not recently anymore. It's been over a year now. But I have a new job, and my office is in Oakland. And <laughs> so I specifically got a season ticket plan to the Oakland A's because yeah. they're in the same division as the Angels. So I was like, I'm going to every single Mike Trout game. Yeah. And then, you know, the pandemic happened and so on and so forth. But um, I actually think, I actually think, one of the two players with the Padres is going to play out there. Yeah, contract. I, could see that. I think it's more going to be closer to Manny Machado because his is only ten years versus Tatis at fourteen. Okay. Um, and I think that, is this Manny's third year into that contract? Uh, Last year was year two, I believe. Yeah, yeah. This he's going into his third year because yeah. he signed his uh, a couple of weeks before Four, Bryce Harper, Harper signed his, and then Bryce thought he was king of the world, and then Mike Trout just completely obliterated his contract. Yeah. Uh, with with his senior, so I mean San Diego is a great place to live, Amen. right? And so I could just see it, you know, and the Padres bulked up this off season, they right? Did. I mean they got Blake Snell and uh, and uh, uh, the guy from the Cubs who was with the Rangers, uh, didn't they get you Darvish? Oh, you're right, they did. They got you Darvish. So and then the the Dodgers countered with signing. Oh, who did the, the Dodgers sign the pitcher too? Um, after the Padres, I can't remember who it is, but anyway, the Padres were the king of free agency until the Dodgers said, hey, we are the World Series champs. We're still here in the NL West, so it should be an interesting race. Okay. Um, oh, you wanted to know who they all were. So, we got Tatis Jr., Mookie Betts, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, Manny Machado, Giancarlo Stanton, Robinson Cano, Joey Votto, Albert Pujols. These are going in order of which they've signed for most recent to the old. Um, Alex Rodriguez, Derek Jeter... Okay, Alex Rodriguez, Dave Winfield, Dave Winfield, check this out. His was 10 years for $23 million. I mean, so, and then after Dave Winfield was Richie Zisk, who's an outfielder with the Rangers, and then Wayne Garland. So, you know, Dave Winfield signed his in 1981 for 10 years, $23 million. The next one didn't come along until 20 years later, yeah. Alex Rodriguez, for $252 million. Because you should never sign a 10-year contract. You, I, 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 I completely agree. I completely agree. Okay. So, um, I think we should just move on to the next person. Fair enough. Think? I'm Fair ready. enough. We're going to move on to the next one. the first one, so I'm ready for All right. One. So, we're going to talk about the next one here from the Cooperstown Distillery. It's called Beanball Bourbon. Beanball in honor of a tactical throw by pitchers when they wanted to brush somebody off the base that it might have gone towards their head. Which is frowned upon in today's MLB because someone could die. Not just get hurt, but someone could die. Um, but it was a regular practice in... Best in, brush out, though, was in the 2015 World Series when I was at Game 3 and Noah Syndergaard on the first pitch. <laughs> yeah, and but, that pitcher at the player brushed him right off. Yeah, but wasn't that because that same player had taken out a Mets player but, in Game no, 1 or 2? No, that was Chase Utley of the Dodgers. Uh, no. But that guy base and talking smack so he just said I'm 60 feet away from <laughs> and mean, took him out. Thor's, Thor's got those locks. I mean he's, he's a big dude too. I mean that, mm -hmm. that's a uh, yeah yeah. Okay. Uh, Beanball this is a bourbon not a whiskey so it, it did age in uh, new charred oak barrels. It, it aged six years so we're talking that's longer than a bottled and bond so six years is pretty good. Now this is it's a blend, right? It's 80-20 sourced bourbon from Indiana. Again, we'll get into that in a later episode. And then 20% from uh, grains and a bourbon distilled actually from local farmers in New York. And it's a four grain. That 20% from New York is a four grain mash bill. So it's corn, rye, malted barley, and oats. So, no, no, no. It's corn, rye, wheat, and oats. And so, you know me, I'm, I'm all about tasting something different. So six years, four grains in the bourbon. Let's go ahead and give this a try. All right. Did I? I haven't. I yeah, haven't opened you can still this. Seal. It's still it's still sealed. So that's a uh, can. <laughs> can't drink it while it's still sealed. Let's go ahead. I thought I had taken the plastic off, but they put a. So you know this is the virgin tasting right here. I haven't even opened the bottle yet. All right. So here we go. 
Thank you. There you go. Okay, so bean ball. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about pitchers, but we're really going to just talk more about the Hall of Fame on this one. So, uh, but let's just go ahead and give this a sip first. Are we going to cheers on yeah, this one? Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. cheers. All Always. Right. Mm, smells good. Smells light. Ooh, I really like that one. Hmm. I really like that one. I think I like this one better. What? Yeah. What? You're allowed to have a different opinion. That's right. As, Butler. as I always say, everyone has their own individual palate that tells them, but this one's better. I strongly disagree. But <laughs> it's okay. We've we've never strongly disagreed before, have we? Uh, we strongly disagree all the time. <laughs> so, No, it's good. It's good. It is good. I do like it, but I like this. You know, I like this so better. there's a lot of bourbons out there that I like that have a butterscotch smell and mm -hmm. taste to them, whatever. And I hate butterscotch candy. But if you put it in my bourbon, my whiskey, I'm okay with it. Well, You're right. I can kind of taste that. Putting it in there, yeah. right? But it does have that, that taste to it. So, well, anyway. Okay. So back to back to the baseball which is really what i'm sure everybody tuned in to talk about so we're talking about cooperstown distillery home of the hall of fame and you actually brought it up yourself you were at the yes. hall of fame was it 2018 or 2017 whenever king griffey went in yeah whenever, whenever king, king griffey, griffey went in, in, it was by the way shout out to the kid love the kid it, it, i, I want to say it was either 2016 or 2017 but i can't remember off the top of my head okay so, speaking of King Griffey Jr., I actually did not remember that you went to that one. So, he was the first person to eclipse the 98% vote, 98% of the votes to get into the Hall of Fame. He was the first one to do that. I think Tom Seaver was pretty close, too. Or maybe he was the first one to do 99. Actually, you're right. Tom Seaver was 98. King Griffey was the first one over 99. Okay. And Derek Teeter was the and first then Derek Teeter. No, no, no. He missed like by one he vote. He missed by one vote. Okay. Whoever so, was that writer. All right, all right, yeah, I don't, I don't, you yeah, whoever you purpose. are, just, you know, uh, we, we won't talk bad about you. But anyway, so King Griffey was the first one to eclipse 99%, followed by the captain, and the perfect one was uh, greatest closer ever. I don't know. Mariano Rivera. Oh, I did know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mariano Rivera is the only, only person to go into the Hall of Fame with a perfect vote count. So, so those are three of the top 10 mm -hmm. percentage-wise mm -hmm. vote getters. Mm -hmm. Can you name me four others in the top 10? Okay, well, did Tom Seaver doesn't count, but I already got him. Tom right? Seaver, he, he counts as your other one, so he okay. counts, that's one. Of course, yeah, well, yeah. Tom Seaver, may he rest <laughs> in peace. Um, I want to say it's probably more recent people, so maybe Greg Maddox? No. Really? Hmm. Although Greg Maddox is at 97.2%, okay. but he's not in the top 10. Okay. Uh, Babe Ruth? Nope. Huh. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you got to think, the percent, I mean, you're a math teacher, right? So it yeah. all depends on how many voters that year and then how many of those voters voted for you. And then some years there are more voters than there yeah, are others. So, yeah. you know. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. <sighs> Two of them are represented on this table right here. Oh, well then Cal Ripken. Yes, Cal Ripken Jr. And is that Tom Gla Is that, um... No, this is Warren Spawn. Oh, never mind. Hank Aaron. Yes, oh, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Hammer and Hank, may he rest in peace. Yeah. Um, is I don't that know. four? That's three. That's three. Okay, the other so... Uh, so I'll just run them top to bottom. Rivera, Jeter, Griffey Jr., Tom Seaver. Yeah. Followed by my man, Nolan Ryan. Uh, okay. Nolan Ryan. Started out as a Met, by the way. Started out as a Met. Yes, yes, yes. The Miracle Mets. Um, Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah. Uh, Ty Cobb. Okay. George Brett, Hank Aaron, and Tony Gwynn. Shout I out to the Padres. Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn's he, a good one. If you had to say one of my top favorite players of all time, Tony Gwynn's on. I know. He just seemed like such a nice guy. Pure you know? hitter. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Totally a pure hitter. Yeah. You, you know, he could still survive in today's game because yeah, you could so not would. shift against Tony no, Gwynn. Tony Gwynn would He'd still get on base. Out. He would figure it out. He would still figure it out yeah. against the shift. Agreed. Okay. 
So we're talking about math. We're talking about, so we talked about top percentage vote getters, but who was the actual top vote getter? Who got the most votes ever? I know this is just this is just a random I a random no question. Idea. Derek Jeter. For all no, it's not Derek Jeter. Not even in the top five. For all of you who played sports trivia or whatever, make well, sure you listen to this. It just has to matter this. like who voted. It just that has year. to matter how many voters they had that year. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's completely random. I have no idea. Number one all time vote vote getter, Greg Maddox. Okay. He got 555 votes out of 571. Okay. Followed by Cal Ripken Jr. Okay. Randy Johnson. Yeah. Tony Gwynn and Tom Glavin. Okay. Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin. Why did you guys torture the Mets so much in the nineties? That they only won one World Series. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. But that's <laughs> that's that's those are all the World Series that the Mets didn't go to that those years. Okay. So then, by contrast, who has received the fewest votes and still been inducted into the Hall of Fame? Ooh. Yeah. Those okay. are some scraper buyers. Um, well, no, 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 no. Well, like, just barely made the 75%. Oh, no, 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 no. The number true. of votes. Number of votes. Although all of these are in the 70s for their percentage. Yeah. I have no idea. I, these are random questions, dude. I know, I'm just I know, proud I, I got 15 on the 10 contract. <laughs> and so, I knew Tom Seaver had over, almost nine, over 98% of the votes. Yes. I know my Mets facts. Yeah, so you do know your Mets facts. I don't know. So, Pie Trainer, no idea. 1948 received 93 votes. And that was 75%. That was 76.8%. Okay. Her Pinnock okay. got 94 votes. Lefty Grove only yeah. got 123. Jackie Robinson only got 124 well, out of 160 was, votes. Yeah. So, Smaller um, pool that year. Yeah, and then Mickey Cochrane only got 128 votes. Okay. So, okay. So, anyway. Um, so we tasted the bourbon. We're still talking about baseball. Um, so I was talking about Tony Gwynn. I think Tony Gwynn could still survive in today's Major League Baseball with the shifting and analytics and so on and so forth. But do you think Hall of Fame credentials are slipping simply because of how they play baseball today with all the analytics and the shifting? You know, I mean, you know, Ozzie Smith never went and lined up on the other side of second yeah. base, right? I mean, he just... It, neither did Jared Jeter, right? I mean, so pitchers don't pitch as long as they used to. Are, no. we, are we ever going to see another 300-game hitter? I mean, 300-game uh, uh, no. win pitcher? How far, is, how far off is Clayton Kershaw? And Zach Greinke. Zach Greinke's got to be in the Yeah, but I think, I think they, they're, they're in the 200s, right? right? But, I mean, yeah. to, to win 20 is, games and the way they play this year, uh, the way they You're play right, now. You may I mean, never see it, but... I think baseball is different than it was. I don't. Some things I think are better. Some things I think are worse. I think the shift and all that. Um, I is, don't like the shift. I don't like it. But I, I, so I was listening to something the other day that's like, well, then you need to adapt to it too, and then maybe they'll stop shifting. So <laughs> learn how to bunt down the third baseline, and then maybe they'll stop shifting. Or learn how to get over. to the opposite field. Right. Exactly. So. Um, I, I think the people who've gone in recently, and there's no one going in this year, I think the ones that have That's gone... That's unfortunate. Too. It is, but no one's qualified at this point. I Well, you, people will make the argument that Bonds and Clemens and and, and all them don't deserve to go in. That's I, my next question. That, that was going to be my next question, right? Is, I think my person who I would pick that needs to go in is Pete Rose. Oh, for sure. For and sure. I think Pete Rose will go in after he dies. I don't think they want to give him the satisfaction that he's going to go in. I think as, as he dies, I think they'll put him in posthumously. I'm calling it. We'll see. I could be wrong. That's unfortunate. That's it is unfortunate. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Gosh. that's the person I think definitely needs to be in, and he's just an idiot for betting on baseball. But you're right. Barry Bonds was had a Hall of Fame career before. Roger Clemens had a Hall of Fame career yes, before. Right. Both of them did. And I you're just right. think... I just think that the argument of I think it's it's not even the argument that the the steroids help them be better because like yes you might be stronger but I mean if you ever saw Bonds like at the plate his hand eye coordination and how quickly he could spin around and like his pitch selection he just didn't swing at bad pitches uh -huh. right but when he when he swung at a pitch it was gone right um and Kurt Schilling was close this year, but then he took himself out of the running. Yeah, I don't know what that was all. That's just because Kurt is just like he's a weirdo. <laughs> Kurt is Kurt is he's a weirdo. Kurt's Kurt. But hey, that bloody sock game 
Which, by the way, I saw the bloody sock at Cooperstown. They Did you really? Sock. They put it in Cooperstown. <laughs> and I remember taking a picture of it because it was super cool. And I remember watching that entire series because I just graduated college. Was that 2004? It was 2004. My dad and I stayed up, and my dad never stayed up. And we watched every single one of that Yankees. Um, that was the ALCS Yankees, for the bloody sock. The Yankees yeah, yeah, Red yeah, Sox yeah. series. We watched every single one of that series from start to end, and it was Awesome. I mean, it was it that was, was pretty, that's one of my favorite baseball memories. I mean, how, how it could it not be yeah. a favorite baseball memory? Just I mean, those I mean, I didn't actually go to those games, but I did watch them on TV because yeah. they were on so late. But I mean, you know, you see all the fans and they're all it's cold. You know, they all got their jackets on and they're like, "Is Big Poppy gonna do it? We got two outs." Yeah, and then, I mean, two games in a row. Yeah. He came through. He came through. Lunch. See you tomorrow night. I'm never <laughs> Every time they'd be like, "Well, you know, yeah. I mean, we're not going home." So, and then Johnny Damon ended up going and playing for the Yankees. I know, that's uh, crazy. It is what it is. Well, anyway, okay. So, all right. So we already talked about who we thought should be in the Hall of Fame. That's not in the Hall of Fame. So you think it should be Barry Bonds and and? Well, Robert I agree Bonds. with you, Pete Rose. But I'm I I I'm a I'm a big Barry Bonds fan, and I just think that uh, I think he should be in. And um, I, I think I don't he, disagree with you. I, I mean, I th and I think Roger Clemens. I mean, I mean, the guy threw like seven no hitter. No, but he no, also seven threw MVPs. a bat. He threw a bat at Mike Piazza, and I can't. Keep up <laughs> so really, yeah. really, that's why you're gonna keep him out? Yeah, for right now. Okay, for right Maybe now. He's only got one more year of eligibility until yeah. he goes to like the veteran committee. Yeah, he yeah. might get in that way. They both might. I do, but I just, you know, I just feel like everyone should just get off their high horse. And, like, these guys are amazing baseball players. I mean, who could remember, who could forget, I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with Bonds or Clemens, but who could forget the summer of 98? I remember being in college and every day wanting to come home and watch SportsCenter to see if McGuire or Sosa had yeah. hit a home run. And some days it was both of them, right? I mean, I remember when McGuire hit the, um, I had a field hockey game, I came home. It was like a random weekday night, and I remember him hitting it to break the record. I the one that, like the one that went screaming down the, the left field line and barely over the fence. In, watch, no one else wanted to watch baseball, so I was upstairs watching in my parents' room. <laughs> but I remember watching that game, yes. So. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was a good summer. That was yeah. a good summer. Um, yeah. And then Bonds, when he broke it, like three years later, 2001. Yeah. I actually saw him in 2002 in Colorado. Now, it's Coors Field, right? So they say the ball flies out there. But I saw him hit three home runs in one game. And after he hit the first two, I think they walked him his next time up. And when the game was out of hand by the time he came up the fourth time, I was like, are they really going to pitch to him again? Are they really? And they did. And he hit it out. So, you know, anyway, those are my, those are my, those, those are my two. So, okay, so this last one... This last question still has to do about the Hall of Fame. So we're talking about young players earlier, under the age 23. We didn't get into players in their prime, right? But if there's a player today, 30 and under, that heaven forbid something tragic happened to them, right? Mm -hmm. Who 30 and under, not named Mike Trout, uh, right? Yeah, 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 I know. Who 30 <laughs> and under, not named Mike Trout, would have Hall of Fame credentials today? The only other person that comes immediately to mind is Freddie Freeman. But he's not under 30. He's 30. 30 and under, you said. Is he really? Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure he's 30. He might be 31 or 32. I don't know. But even so, if something tragic happened, I think Freddie Freeman qualifies. He's yeah. clutch. Freddie Freeman's a nationals killer. He's, he's a he's nationals a, he's killer. He's an everybody's killer. He's I mean, a, he's a cut, he can clutch it, hit a what double. What is it about these left-handed hitters, right? I mean, and he's Griffey fun to listen to. Like if you ever, if they ever mic him up on first base, he's really fun to listen to, <laughs> um, talking to everybody. So I really like Freddie Freeman, even though he's an Atlanta Brave. So he would be my pick. But I'll check his age. I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's it's. But tough. he would be the one I. It's tough for me. Um, you know, because Mike Trout would be, should be everyone's answer. Absolutely. Um, it should be everyone's answer. And, you know, I don't think Bryce Harper Absolutely. is there. And no, I don't, I don't even think, I don't even think Mookie Betts is there. Yeah, yeah. But, um. Getting closer, but not yet. Yeah, getting closer. But, you, uh, you know, you could, maybe you could put a Jose Altuve in there okay. in the conversation. You could Fair put enough. him in the conversation, right? But he's going to have that, that whole, like, 
trash can banging thing hanging over his head. I mean, all those guys would be actually Was Springer. he wearing, was he wearing a, <laughs> something a shotgun to let him know what the pitch was Dodgers like? fans, we are we not condoning know. what happened, okay? We are not condoning what happened. We're just bringing it up. We're just yeah. bringing it up. Um, Clayton's over 30. Yeah. Yeah, he's over yeah. 30. So is and DeGrom. So, and so is DeGrom. Yeah, DeGrom would certainly certainly get my vote. So, yeah, he'll never um, get enough wins. God bless him. You know, but, but. here's... So, Steven Strasburg, who's who's over 30, he's like 31, I think. I, you know, I think he's one of those, like, he's got a, he's got a World Series MVP, you know, but yeah, he's got an... He's injured all He's got time. an injury history, you know, yeah, and there's that... I think that's just gonna... What... I don't know. How old is Anthony Rendon? Is he 30? Is I he think over 30? he's over 30. I yeah, really think yeah. he's over 30. But I think he might, he's one of those, oh. He's quiet. You know what? Nolan Arenado. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's over 30. I think he's like 31 or so. I'm curious to see how he'll do in St. Louis this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that he's out of Colorado and all the thin air. Yeah, yeah, But But he's still clutch. But he could, uh, you know, the thin air doesn't help you throw a laser from third base to first base. You know, so. um, But anyway. Um, Okay, so we don't want to end on a tragic note, so. We're going to go out. We've talked about the whiskeys. We're going to go out with who – not, not going to ask you who's going to win the World Series. I'm going to say who's going to be in the NLCS and who's okay. going to be in the ALCS. Okay. So I think, honestly, the Mets are in the top five in the power rankings for MLB right now. Yeah, today. So they whoever, haven't actually played a regular season game. Whoever yet. comes out in NL East between whether it's the Braves or the Mets, I think will be in NLCS. No, or the Nationals. I don't think the Nationals. But, <laughs> and I also think, I, I think the Dodgers will be back in the NLCS, unfortunately. Okay. Because I don't think the Central's um, that strong this year. Um, although St. Louis, now that they've not added Nolan Ar- Arenado, who knows? So, um, and then in the ALCS, um, great question. Um, well, the Yankees... The Yankees are the Yankees. It hurts my heart to say that, but I think the Yankees um, might actually put it together this year. Yeah, they might. And then, I don't know. Who else is going to be good in the, in the AL this year? Well, I mean, I'm sure they'll have plenty of good teams in the right. AL this year. Oakland kind of stripped their team again, but they always show up. But yeah, Every year, Oakland's um, in it, though. Every year, Oakland's in it. I don't um, know. I don't know. I think the Yankees and someone else. The Yankees and someone else. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna say the Padres. I think the Padres wow. are gonna. I think bold prediction. I know it's a very sense. bold prediction, but I think they had a very good off season, and I think I, I think, think they're still too young. I think they're close, but I don't think they're there yet. Yeah, but sometimes sometimes it takes those young teams that don't yeah. know what. Well, if Blake Snell's in the NLCS, maybe they won't take him out at Game 7 in the second <laughs> game, and maybe throw an amazing game. Just maybe throw not. it out there. Maybe not, maybe not. So I'm going to go with the Padres, and I'm going to go with, I'll, I'll go with the NL East, right? Somebody okay. out of the NL East. Fair enough. And then in the American League, it hurts my heart to say the Yankees, but I just, I think, I, I do think they're going to figure out a way to put it together. Um, I don't think it's going to be the Astros because they no. got rid of uh, George Springer. They got rid of George Springer, and so, but so the I'm, Blue Jays are not a half bad team. They're not. They're not. They not. They got a lot of young players who, again, they don't know. They don't know what they're supposed to be afraid of, and they, you know, and sometimes don't they just don't care. Out, don't count out the Blue Jays. They don't. Here. Don't count out the Blue Jays. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. I'm going to take another bold prediction okay. and say the Angels. I would love to see that. I would root for – if the Mets can't win, I would root for Mike Trout. I, I would love to see the Angels. The Angels and the Yankees? I mean, can you imagine? That would be fun. Can you imagine Mike Trout's legacy if he plays the Yankees in the ALCS? Yeah. And beats them. And beats them. A couple of big knocks, you know? Yeah. I mean – Yeah. See what I'm saying? Just saying. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's our show for today. Thank you for watching. We've got the Cooperstown Distillery and the two whiskeys from there. I want to thank Amy for joining me in the episode today, Talking Baseball. Thank you for watching the Whiskey Butler. Please like and subscribe and click the bell when you subscribe so you always know when the new videos are coming on. And share with your friends. Appreciate you watching. See you at the ballpark. Take care.